Okay, this is my intro. Um, I'm Emily. This is the Revived Yarns podcast. You can find me on Instagram as Revived Yarns. Um, and I did a video of me using a borrowed drum carter that I'm going to insert here. And then it will go to my actual podcast where I reintroduce myself, but it was too hard to split and add the thing. So I'm doing a new intro. I hope you enjoy it. Um, the drum carter has been super fun and I have made a lot of bats with it that will be very fun to spin. I'm hoping to make a lot more bats over the next week until I have to return it. So enjoy. So <clears throat> this is some Falkland that I dyed and I am going to be blending it with some Manx. It's just a brown and some Tessa Silk, also brown, and some Merino in this maroon. Um, I have made a few already, and this is what they look like. And I'm hoping to have enough for a sweater spin, um, which I should, because I had a pound of the Falkland and I think a pound of the or eight ounces of the oh. now this is pretty compacted because of the dyeing process i actually dyed it twice because the first time it was too light so excuse the dog he is you know there's things outside um so i have to loosen it up quite a bit but it is pretty amazing what this drum carter does after just one pass um i actually have some blends in the closet that I feel like they aren't blended well enough like there's some flax in it that I think I'm just gonna run through as is just to get it more blended in so this is gonna take me a while so rough um, quantities there's about 16 or not 16 um, 12 grams of this and then about I think four of the silk and six each of these um, and the blend should look pretty good all right it's going to get a little bit loud hopefully i can figure out how to mute this part if i need to It helps to break them up into smaller pieces, though sometimes when it's really compacted it takes a while. Um, but I try to get a good layer of this color down first, and then do the maroon purple. I don't even know what color this is, I can't remember. Maybe it was called Merlot. This Manx is funny, it's really soft and it's uh, pretty short staple, so it works really well for these. But it is smelly. It really smells like sheep. And then with the silk, I take a little piece. I probably won't use all this. And then I just do like this because I don't want the. It tends to get stuck on the first roller. And then just let it go across. Once it's mixed in with the wool, it doesn't get as stuck. Um, I've been using it for the past couple of weeks. I borrowed it from someone in my spinning group, and I have to return it on Saturday. So I'm trying to get it all done. I really have enjoyed it, but I'm not sure if I want to invest in one of my own because they are kind of expensive and they do take up a bit of space. Um, so, yeah, but it has been really fun to use. The 
especially because I really like spinning from bats and roll eggs, uh, doing roll and spinning. Because I'm going to run this few, through a few more times, I'm not too concerned about getting thin layers of each color. Uh, this is what's so great about a drum carter. I tried doing this on my blending board and it did not work because I had to do layers on and then take it off and then do layers from that, take it off, and it's just so much faster with this. I mean, it's totally possible to do it on a blending board and I probably will do that when I don't have the drum carter anymore. But since I'm doing sweater quantity, which I'm gonna have like two pounds, that's a lot to do because it took me, I think, six passes to get it blended. Um, even just a little, like, nicely blended, but I still, when I got the drum carter, I ran it through to blend it more and it made a huge difference. Though if you like the look of more PC spins, then a blending board will work right. I wanted more cohesive, well blended fibers. I bought this fall blend when I was at the spin in on Wiki Island um, from Lopez Island Fibers. I bought quite a bit from her because she doesn't do online sales, so it's just when I see her at events that I can stock up. There's a opening here that you guys can't see. It doesn't have spikes. Just hook it in. Take it off. And for some reason, this leaves a lot of fibers at the edge. I think it's because I don't do it very thick. But I just kind of leave it on there when I'm doing all the same color. And then clean it up when I'm done. Alright, so this is what the first pass looks like. And then what I do is I rip it in half and then lengthways and then half again. And so I've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight pieces. And then each of those pieces before I put them on, I'll split in half again. And that just gives really nice blend work because there's and then layered on much smaller little pieces. And if you wanted your fibers to be all perfectly aligned, I think you would probably want to do smaller pieces and try not to pull them out too much, but I like the fibers going all different directions 
but I like the woven spinning. And if you were going to try and do worsted with these, I don't, I don't know if it'll actually be very possible, um, but you probably could get a relatively smooth yarn if you kept it orderly. But parted fibers are mostly for woven spinning. Yeah. smaller one to just put little pieces there in the middle that aren't coming out. I'm not sure if <clears throat> all drum carters do this, but this one seems to hold on to fibers. It is an older one. Um, I think the signature at the bottom says 2006, which, you know, is not actually that long ago in my mind. All right, that looks pretty good. Um, it's probably use another pass, but I'm actually going to be leaving them a little bit less blended just because I only have a few more days with this and want to get all of this process before I have to bring it back. So I'm going to go through and do the rest of this giant thing <laughs> or until I run out of one of the other colors with it. Um, and then hopefully I'm going to do a podcast. All right, welcome to the Revived Yarns podcast. You can find me on Instagram as Revived Yarns. Uh, I am Emily, and this is my dog. I'm going to attempt to do this with him here. He's been very sleepy this morning, so um, maybe he'll continue sleeping. And maybe I'll have to pause to kennel him because he is sniffing some of my yarn. Very interested in it. Okay, so I don't have my notes about things so hopefully I remember what I need to know. All right so my first finished object is this sweater made out of some sparkly yarn that I spun. I don't know if you can see the sparkles. Oh there we go my lighting is not great. This I started with the turtle dove pattern note like um, numbers and then just kind of went from there the sleeves like aren't as deep as a turtle dove, the neckline's different, all that stuff's different. This is yarn that I spun. I made roll eggs with um, some sparkly, some merino and some kind of sparkly stuff, nylon plasticky stuff, and then um, did blue and purple bits in the roll eggs as well. And uh, yeah, I love it. It's the perfect sweatshirt fit. I've worn it like 10 times since I made it. It's finally getting too warm now, but um, yeah, it's perfect. And 
because it's brown so it's like mostly brown and the sparkles there most people don't actually realize it's sparkly until i like would ask about it and i tell them um what it is uh made from all right i also finished my super long cowl um with that reclaimed cashmere so it's three different colors it was a sweater that faded uh, eh, 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 don't you eat <laughs> he's trying to eat the yarn you your kennel's in here and i'll put you in it um so yes this is very long it can be <laughs> put on oh so it's like super kind of ridiculous actually um i can also fold it which works a little bit better so i just fold it into there oh there he goes should have let him left him downstairs but i wanted to be able to close the door um So folded, it's a little bit more reasonable. Uh, and then also, it is long enough to just wear like a scarf, especially just tucked into a coat. So I think this will definitely be one that gets a lot of use. I have another really big cowl that I wear a lot. Um, and this one's more neutral. Leave it, leave it. <clears throat> and then I went into my stash and found some other cashmere that I wanted to use up. Uh, I feel like I'm in this mood of just wanting to use up things that I haven't been able to figure out anything else to do with. And so I've kind of been going through and doing it. And I've this project is fine. I mean, it's a cowl. I probably have too many cowls and don't need another cow cowl. But also, it's a neutral uh, my most worn cowl is like a reddish pink, uh, which is not a neutral, but I wear it anyway. So this one is um, basket weave there and leave it alone. Okay, lay down. Good boy. Uh, I have not woven in the ends and neither of these have been blocked. The sweat, this sweater has been. And in the same vein of trying to use things up, I cast on and ripped out so many times with this pink um, Heather Tweedy hand spun. Uh, it's pretty thick and it's not super soft and everything I tried just didn't work. Um, so I've got this, I had one ball of black cashmere from reclaimed. So I held that with it, which makes it a lot softer. And I started making a shawl and realized there's no way I had enough yarn and I didn't have anything that went with it. Um, okay. you stop it. Uh, so I just connected it to make kind of a cowl thing. Excuse me. You are a little stinker. You knocked off one of my yarns. I don't know if this is going to work with him in here. He is pretty cute, though. Look at that face. You can't even see that face because he's so dark. Uh, this is very warm. And because of the cashmere right here, it's actually not uncomfortable or scratchy. Also not been blocked. I really need to do that. Uh, but yeah, it's another thing. I just wanted to use up the yarn. I feel like some of my hand spun. I've just, or even the reclaimed yarns. I just don't, I don't have any plans for it and I want to use it because I don't want it just sitting around. It's a good boy. Yes. I have fiber in my mouth. Blech. So I've just kind of been working through that and I probably need to be slightly more intentional maybe about what I spin. Leave it alone. Leave it alone. I probably should have brought treats up. And then I also went to the Whidbey Island Spin-In my second year there. I'm pulling up all the blankets. I don't have any sheets, so I hate stuff in. Or pillowcases on because they're being washed right now. I was hoping he would ignore that part. Ugh, my God. Okay. So Whidbey Island Spin-In in Oak Harbor. I went there. I had to kennel the dog because he was just out of control. <clears throat> Had a lot of fun. I stayed the night, which probably didn't need to. We're close enough that I could have driven, but I kind of wanted a break from 
family life, cleaning, cooking, all that stuff. Uh, and it's in a high school and which has a lot of room, great space, but metal folding chairs that were extremely cold. So when I got back, I grabbed some of that hand spun that I hadn't been intentional enough with that I wasn't going to use for anything else. Um, and made corner to corner garter stitch um, seat cushion. So it's pretty good sized. It's double layered. I made two and then just sewed them together. So I believe this lighter blue and purple is an alpaca. It's one of my very first hand spun on a spinning wheel that I did during a class. And then this darker purple I held with it is a Wensleydale, I believe, that's kind of scratchy and wasn't very pleasant. And then I ran out of the dark purple, so I used a brown that was left over from some slippers I knit. Then I ran out of the lighter one, so then I used some commercial. Then I ran out of that, and I <laughs> used some more commercial purple that was left, and then some more I think it's recycled with the commercial. Anyway, I used up a bunch of scraps and now I have a cushion for next year or for any time that I'm going to be spinning somewhere that I'm not sure if I will have a comfy, warm seat. So those are my knitting projects that I finished. Oh, I do have a crochet project that I finished. I started and finished in like two days. I had this, um, I'm trying to, it's a project bag, so I'm taking out my project. I had this um, fading linen yarn that I had reclaimed from a sweater and everything I tried with it, it just, it didn't make sense because each ball faded, some balls didn't fade, some faded at different rates. So I decided to do all, I did three strands so that I could add in balls, cut, I did a lot of cutting and piecing together to make the fade work. And I crocheted a rectangle. And then I crocheted around that rectangle and made a bag with a rectangle bottom. And then I just, at the very top, I did um, little chain one spaces, I think, and then just crocheted a drawstring. And it's just drawstring bag. It works great as a project bag. It used up almost every bit of this linen from that sweater. It was like a short sleeve sweater that um, I've had years and years in my stash. Now my project's all tangled. So I got another stash entry out that's been in there for a long time. And I have a project bag. It's very nice. I mean, obviously needles stick out. I can't put loose stitch markers in there because they'll fall through. But for just at home wanting to corral my project, it works great. All right, now I've got some Oh, actually, first I'll show this one. So I was dyeing that fiber that hopefully I will have inserted that video of me using my drum carter, the borrowed drum carter, and I dyed that fiber. Well, first I got the crock pot all prepped because I was going to do it in the crock pot. And then I realized there's no way a pound of fiber is fitting in this crock pot. So I got out my giant pot to do that on the stove, but I didn't want to waste like the dyed, ready dye and the everything. So I took four skeins of reclaimed white cashmere and I threw it in and I got this very interesting. Actually, one of them is much lighter than the others. I could totally do a fade. Uh, so this is the lightest. And then there's little bits of purpley, um, dark, some darker pink. Yeah, it turned out nice. And I might do a color work project actually would work really well with this. So that's that. And then this, oh, I sh I'll show this. This is a skein of four different bl fiber blends and different preps and different um, ways of spinning. It was a class at the Woodby Island Spin-In, was um, practicing worsted versus woolen and how you, um, how those are done differently and what kind of effects you can get. Uh, so I had a whole bobbin full of these practice ones, and so I just chain plied it. Um, of course, it's not a um, very usable yarn because 
some spots are smooth, some are not. Some, I mean, it's all different fibers, but it hasn't been washed yet. But I'll use it in a scrappy project, maybe. Um, I've got a few other skeins like this from other classes. And then I have some already done of this spin. Um, hopefully it's similar enough because I was planning on doing a cardigan with it. But I bought some really giant bats from Edgewood Garden Fibers um, a year ago and had spun up two of them. And I have two more. So I got another one out and spun it up. Oh, sorry the lighting's so bad. Should have opened the curtain, but then the window would have been making everything dark. Um, yeah, it's very soft. It's a merino. It does have um, some longer guard hairs in it, which I don't usually find with my merinos. But yeah, I don't know why these two skeins look so different colors. Hmm, interesting. Is this really the same yarn? Man, now I'm all confused. This actually might be... Oh, I think... The... <laughs> I totally got that wrong. These are the merinos, and I'm missing one of my skeins. I don't know what happened to it in my shifting of things. This is some Jacob that I spun up. I actually purchased at the spin-in. I'd run out of what I brought to spin while I was there. And so I purchased some Jacob and I started spinning that. Um, so this is chain plied because I needed my bobbin free. And um, it's really soft actually, which is why I thought it was the Merino. Yeah, though it is a slightly different color, but I totally, in a pinch, use this with it. But I think I'll have enough with all of them I purchased. And then for some reason, I decided I wanted to learn how to spin boucle. So I watched a few tutorials and I dug out some hand dyed, and I'm totally not gonna remember what kind of fiber it is, but it's kind of, um, it was kind of coarse, not super soft. Uh, I got it from Edgewood Garden Fibers, she Cheviot? No, that's not it. Oh, I can't remember. Anyway, um, I did boucle. And it was so fun, and um, I probably did way too much spinning, and yeah, but these little loops um, I used for the skinny plied with and then the binder yarn. I used re, or no, thrifted wool that I had on a cone, and it just, the brown just kind of blends in. It totally reminds me of grass or moss or something. Anyway, the green was four ounces. Um, and I spun it fine and then did the plied it with little bumps. Like as you ply it, you do it at a 90 degree angle and then every once in a while you push up bumps. So that then when it's plied the other way, those bumps turn into loops. And I'm, I don't know what to make with this. It's actually not as rough as I thought it would be. But I, I don't think I would want a cowl or a scarf, though. And I think a boucle hat might look weird. Maybe I'll weave it, or it may just stick in my stash until one day I decide I really have to do something with that, and then I make a project that I'm not super happy with. <laughs> Which seems to be my MO right now. And then the drum carter. I've been having a ton of fun with that. So I have this merino fiber that was actually... Um, I got it from someone I knew who had been gifted, you know, those giant blankets that were really uh, popular for a while that were made out of just straight roving that, of course, pilled terribly and didn't last because they were impossible to keep take care of. Um, I got some of that that was green, and so I took some recycled sari silk in liquid blue and other bits and some tassa silk that I had dyed green and I created some bats with it. I got I think six ounces total done. Oh sorry my allergies are terrible but a whole bag of them. <laughs> a giant Ziploc bag. Um, so I think that was one of the first things I tried on the drunk carter because I wanted to see how well I could blend in the silk and I totally could have blended in more. Uh, and then I went through and I grabbed some um, oh goodness, I don't even know if I remember all of it in this one, but I know it was some dyed Coriadale that I had dyed and I didn't know what to do with. And then some blues and purples and other colors and some, some of the, 
I think I put the sorry silk in here. Now that I'm, oh no, I put, okay, so I got silk hankies two years ago. And if you have ever spun or worked with silk hankies, you have to stretch them. And it's basically just stretching out a huge string and then you spin it. And it seems kind of pointless because you could totally just nip the string without spinning it because it's so strong. Well, it's also very unpleasant to pull them out because uh, silk is tough and it hurt my hands and it was, it would stick to my dry hands if I was doing it at the wrong time of year when my hands weren't moist enough. Uh, so what I did was I stretched, I fluffed it as much as I could and then I cut it up, which is probably like hugely like terrible in some circles to cut up silk hankies, but also I'm not gonna use it otherwise. And it's this bright blue. Um, so I mix that in. I got one, two, three, four, five maybe? It's hard to tell once they're squished into a bag. Five of these bats. Um, I should actually make some more with, because I still have tons of those silk hankies. There's a lot of silk hankies in the mounts. I could make some more, because um, I don't think it's going to be enough for an actual project. Uh, but that was fun. And then I had some black merino that I decided to just plot, uh, to blend with some recycled sari silk that I got at local yarn store day at Northwest Yarns and they changed their name recently. Northwest Yarns basically. Um, and Mercantile, that's what they did because they added other stuff to their store. Um, some greenish sari silk. Uh, wow, it's hard to tell, but there's green in here. I didn't actually blend this one up as much as the other ones because I kind of wanted black and green to be more defined. Uh, this is going to be really fun to spin up. But anyway, I had, I think, nine ounces of black, which actually I bought at two separate times and the dialogues were not the same. So I had to like tear it all up and make sure I mixed in both different kinds of blacks with the green, um, which is why you should always buy enough for your project at the time that you purchase it. So yes, I've got that to spin up. And then the ones that I was making on my video that I think I started with, which I should have done an intro on that video because it's just gonna, maybe I'll try and splice it. Oh, I don't like editing. Uh, anyway, that, those are fun. And I'm gonna return the drum carter on Saturday so then I won't be able to do it anymore, which is kind of sad. But also it'll give me time to do other things because I feel like I haven't actually finished very much, which is weird because I feel like I was doing a lot of knitting. All right, well, one of those things is because of this cardigan um, that I ooh, currently have on. Oh, this is a mess, wow. So I spun up this um, mill ends from Slim Chicken on Etsy that I purchased and applied it with some Cormo. And then I realized I was not gonna have enough for my project, so I ordered some more but I didn't have any more of the Cormo and so I applied it with itself and I decided to stripe it and I, I'm not sure how it's looking this sleeve I started the sleeve because even with the new yarn I spun I'm not sure I'm gonna have enough um, I don't the striping up here is darker than the striping that goes down the body um, this is another one of those projects I think this is kind of why I feel like a failing knitter or something because I've like I just didn't think through some of these projects this is currently attached to like three balls of yarn right now um but the cardigan is kind of self-drafted um which is basically what I do these days now which kind of makes me wonder why anyone would watch my podcast because I don't give any pattern ideas <laughs> or yarn ideas because everything is spun by me uh, but see how stripey that is and then the rest of it is not that stripey. Well, it's got a little bit stripey. Anyway, I started some ribbing. Um, I'm going to do the sleeves and see, or I may just rip the whole thing out. And maybe I have some other hand spun that is, is pale like this. And maybe I do fade. Ugh, I don't know. I seriously, I'm just failing as a knitter right now. Um, there it is. I've been looking for this. Is it in there with that? 
I like to keep my 16 inch chowdhury needles in their original plastic thing. Um, okay, so that is a cardigan for me. Um, and since, you know, it's getting warmer, it's not a huge hurry to finish it. So I can take my time. And I found that if I don't love things, I should just rip them out because then I put in more work and then I end up ripping them out anyway. So, uh, but on local yarns today, I went to Apple Yarns in Bellingham and I purchased some Morocco Comfort Nylon Acrylic Blend. Um, and this, even though it looks like the neckline is huge, I need to put, I'm going to crochet around it probably. I'm making a little tank top tee thing for her, um, for my daughter. I don't know if I even said that. It has been a while since I did this. Um, and so I did, I found a lace chart that I liked on Pinterest, I think, which I don't even know if anyone uses Pinterest anymore. Um, and I think it was 21 stitches or 22 or something like that. And so I did those for both sides and then I picked up, um, and did down a little bit until I felt like I could start the body and added for the neckline and then went down etc etc however those things are done um so i'm just working on the body now and i might do the lace chart again at the bottom because um it would add some interest also st i don't think ribbing would work but i don't want to leave it stock and it will roll so i might do lace or i might just crochet around the bottom too um, another work in progress is the elwin pullover and like i said i didn't bring my notes up so I can't remember who made the pattern but I will put in the show notes the list of all these things um, I don't do linking though so if you want to find it you'll have to search for it sorry terrible podcaster um so <laughs> this is also very difficult to see this is a reclaimed merino in navy um and oh, a little bit there so it's textured sleeves that have this really really deep raglan so it's like like the sleeves are basically like there you understand right and then the body is just stockinette so i'm on the stockinette body right now um and then i will have to remember what this texture was i'll have to go back to the pattern um because you know stockinette body there's no shaping so i just go down forever and um then the sleeves are textured the whole way down. I've wanted to knit this for a while and I've actually cast it on a couple of times in different yarns and didn't like it. So this one I think is a winner because I'm still knitting it and I still like it. It's just a lot of stockinette and um, because my I'm a very loose knitter I'm knitting with a size four um, which I guess is not that bad considering that I also have a on hold project that's on size ones um, that may never be finished because that's another one where I'm like, I don't know if I'm gonna like this. <sighs> yeah, so, oh, there's my other Merino. I knew I brought it up here. <sighs> so those are my whips. And then yesterday, another yarn that I've had a really long time and I actually made my Velicor by Andrea Mowry with it. And I have two balls left. Um, it is reclaimed merino from one of those printed cardigans that have like flowers and all these things. So the yarn is very, very uh, speckly, variegated. I don't even know what to call it. And I plied it with a reclaimed cotton silk, just gray. Um, anyway, I have two balls. One ball is lighter than the other ball. So I either would have to stripe it or do like a fady thing. So I'm doing a fady shawl. That's a technical term. Uh, and I'm crocheting it. Ooh, that looks silly. Um, but because it's cotton, linen, only a little bit of merino, um, I figured it like a summery type, something that would be easy to throw on in cooler evenings or um, if someplace is too air conditioned. So yeah, I'm doing just double crochets and then I decided to do 
triple crochets and I'm doing a chain one between each one so that I don't have to actually chain into the stitch. I chain into the space between the stitches. And then I just do two in the tops, the first space on each side. And then two in this middle one on each side. And then I chain three to make the tip, the corner, that thing. And I'm just gonna go until it run out. And I'm actually very pl pleased with this. I This was another one where I cast on like five different things and ripped them out. And then finally found one that I liked. And for some reason I've been wanting to crochet more recently. So I did. Okay, so that's all my whips. I don't have a current spinning project. Um, I probably will start spinning one of these bags of bats next. Um, I have my spinning group on Saturday, so I definitely need a project going. Acquisitions. So in January, February, I ordered a bunch of stuff from BZB Fibers on Etsy, though I think actually she has her own website now. All right, so I ordered 12 ounces of meringue. Meringue? I don't even know. And because I don't have my notes, I don't know what's in it, but I'm pretty sure it is a merino and tessa silk, and it is so soft. And, ooh, it smells sheepy. I need to either dye it. It's such a beautiful blend that I'm like, I'm not sure if I want to like make roll legs with it and add uh, 12 ounces is not enough for a sweater. So I do need to add something to it. So I might do blend this, maybe get some recycled sari silk or some Tessa silk in another color. So it's got flex in it. Oh, more fiber in my mouth. But yeah, that's another, another one day. And then I got a BFL silk blend, eight ounces of a, um, the BFL was a dark color and the silk. This also extremely soft. I was like really in the mood to spin silk blends, obviously, when I ordered these. Um, I could probably actually do these two together. Uh, <laughs> I'm pretty sure that's more than just a silk and one fiber blend, but like I said, I didn't bring my notes up. I'm a terrible podcaster. I don't know why anyone watches me. Uh, and then I got a Turon, is what she calls it. One pound, which I've actually taken some off and dyed it um, blue just to see how it takes dye. But this one is a blend of merino, silk, and flax which is interesting because I took a class just soon after I ordered it. I took a class um, with a teacher who will remain nameless, who had some interesting opinions about spinning blends. She seemed to think that you aren't, you couldn't because you couldn't wash them, which is weird because I've spun a ton of blends and washed them and I wear a ton of blends and wash them and everyone else in my group too. Um, it was a weird class, uh, but uh, also it was just nice to spin with some people that I knew already and liked. So the flax pieces are very long and actually I should have brought it, but I left it downstairs. So the flax pieces are super long, so it's not going to spin the same because it'll get caught. Like it will draft in the flax before it drafts in the wool and the silk. So actually I, the pieces that I dyed a blue, I, um, put through the drum carter to see how it will work. And I cut the flax pieces um, with some scissors because they're once it's dyed, it's super obvious. The flax is the brown. Um, it's actually pretty obvious in this, but when it's dyed, the flax doesn't dye the same as the protein fibers do. And it went through the drum carter beautifully. So um, if I want to give myself another pound to drum card, before I return it on Saturday, which I'm not sure I'm gonna be able to do with just, you know, the time. Oh my gosh, my dog is snoring. I can't believe how much he slept today. He doesn't get much sleep on the weekends though because my daughter loves him and doesn't leave him alone. Uh, and then I bought four ounces of silk oil. 
which um, is looks like stuffing almost and um, I actually dyed some of this up and mixed it in with darn it I don't remember which one um, I think I think I dyed it green so I think it's actually in with the greens um, maybe I didn't add it though anyway uh, yes I will actually I might do oof, man I have so many ideas and then it's hard to yeah it totally looks like stuffing uh, so these will create nefs um, in the fibers because the silk won't blend there. So if there's like tiny bits, um, like little chunky bits, that will stay chunky in the blend and will create like a tweaky effect. So I might dye it. Um, this is kind of, I was also, when I ordered all these, I was kind of in the mood to dye yarn and fiber which is why I ordered it all undyed. It just gives me more work or more enjoyment of my purchase, whichever way you wanna look at it. So those are all things I bought. Um, I have, like I said, I dyed some of the flax blend and the noil, and it actually takes dye great. And it's really easy to dye with just food coloring. I just use food coloring and vinegar in a crock pot that's des designated for that. And then I have a giant stock pot that is also designated for that. So I don't mix with food. All right. So, and then I purchased two of these bumps from Phoenix Fiber Art. This is from the Whidbey Island Spin-In. Um, so it's actually Pacific Northwest Fiber Bumps um, from Phoenix Fibers in Squim. I purchased one of these at the first Whidbey Island Spin-In and it was a joy to spin. It was so wonderful. And then I purchased one um, and I had run out of stuff to spin at the spin in. So I started, sp I spun that up. It's still a single. I need to find something to ply it with. But this one is a Merino cross and Tessa silk. Man, apparently I was I, like, everything has silk in it these days. Um, but it is six and a half ounces. And uh, yeah, I'm another one. I don't know what I'm going to do, with, but I want to buy it. And then local the fibers. I purchased that pound of. Oh, in the video I say it's Falkland for some reason, but it's Targhee. I don't know why I keep saying it's Falkland, but like I even put it in my like stash entries as Falkland until I saw the little tag, and I'm like, why do I keep saying it's Falkland? But this is Lopez Island or Lopez Romney roving. And it's a dark brown, um, so soft and fluffy. I don't know why I only got four ounces of it. I should have gotten more, uh, but I might actually fly. I wonder if these could be applied together. Would that be weird? I think this one's too dark for that. I keep everything in plastic bags. I'm having terrible allergies from spring and yard work. Oh, I'm so sore from all the yard work I've done this last weekend. Um, and then from Wine and Wooly Design, which is a new to me dyer. I hadn't, she was there and I hadn't, I don't remember her being there the year before. So it was nice to find someone new. So this is a Merino Bamboo Tessa Silk blend, another blend that is dyed, um, it's not really a fade. Uh, it's got some brown, pink, purpliness. Uh, it's it's gonna be really fun to spin up, and it will make a nice little project like a <clears throat> hat or a cowl. Because apparently, I need 500 things. And then from another one, Dreaming Creek Fiber Arts. It's a Merino and CVM. This stuff is insanely soft. I got two braids and it is so fluffy. Like, I'm pretty sure I've never felt something this fluffy, except maybe the baby yak that I have like an ounce of. It's so soft. Um, and I did, I feel like I'm forgetting something. I, I purchased a lot. 
but I think the other two that I purchased I've spun up already and I told you about those so yes um that is what I've been doing it's been a while um we all got COVID after was it after my spin-in it's possible I brought it back from the spin-in um or maybe it was before oh man I can't even remember time means nothing I cannot believe that it is May I had to actually check and see if it really was May um my son turned 13 in March they have a month of school left my kids and we don't have ton planned for the summer we're taking a week-long vacation to my hometown um in July and then I've got my daughter started soccer so it's kind of ruined our weekends but my son is their soccer games are super close to home and so we may be able to leave him because I have my spinning meeting Saturday the same time that my daughter has a game uh, we might be able to leave him for an hour my mother-in-law also lives with us so he would not be truly alone uh, but she doesn't wake up until like two o'clock and it would be in the morning um, but we would let her know of course that he was there alone so if she heard him that and he has access to a phone to call but yeah it's like I'm still unsure about leaving him but also I'm sure he'd be fine like we leave him at home when the rest of us go on walks my mother-in-law is downstairs in her room so it's not like he's being watched actively um but it is weird because he still sometimes makes choices that make me wonder so <laughs> um and then there is fiber fusion in june that i'm gonna try and go i was gonna go for a couple of days again and take a class and then i decided i wasn't i wasn't right really in about the class um, so I decided not to do the class and I think I will just go for a day so I will probably see if anyone from my spinning guild is going and see if we can carpool because that would be nice to have some company and um, also save on gas because oh my gosh gas prices ridiculous and also when I um, if I mean, I could guess I might drive and share the cost that way, but I take our truck, which is, um, you can only really fit two adults in there. There is a middle seat in the front, but also I don't think I'd want to sit that close to anyone while I was trying to drive because the middle seat is like right next, <laughs> you know, it's one of those tiny Ford Rangers and it has jump seats in the back, which of course no one should use because those are not, um, safe, <laughs> I'm sure for adults or children. Uh, so anyway, I take that when I go, when either my husband or I go someplace, we drive the truck because the person who is with the children needs to have the vehicle that the children can ride in. Um, and it doesn't have air conditioning. And June in Northwest Washington isn't necessarily going to be warm, but also it could be warm because we have had, um, the weirdest weather, like so cold, so rainy, and then suddenly 76 degrees and then back too cold. Um, it's a nice day today and I have a huge list of garden tasks. Um, I'm trying to turn more of our lawn into um, mostly maintenance-free native plantings, um, which is going to be a little different for this neighborhood, but we don't have an HOA so nobody can say anything to me about it. Um, and so I bought a couple of plants. We have uh, a tiny, tiny piece of yard. Sorry, I'm crocheting and just dropped my hook and lost it. Um, we have a tiny section of yard that um, I want to put some native bearberry, kinnikinnik, I think is what they... Um, anyway, I bought two plants from a local nursery and mulch, and I'm going to lay down cardboard and do the cardboard sheet mulching so I don't actually have to pull up the sod because and I probably need to call the utilities people because I know that our electric phone and gas lines run under that spot um, I don't think that they are shallow enough that I would actually hit them while digging to plant one of these very small plants but also I don't want to hit my gas line 
or electrical lines while trying to dig a hole. So I need to call and have them mark that for me. Then I will put down, I'll mark where I'm going to plant that won't hit the lines and do the mulching and plant those. Um, and then I think I will get, because we want to plant something low, like a low ground cover that won't inhibit our view because it's right at the end of our driveway or other people's views um, getting into or seeing our driveway and stuff. Uh, but at further up is under some pine trees and actually a lot of moss grows there. So I need to look for some shade, like a big shade loving bush, which we have a lot of native ones in the Northwest. Um, we actually have a native plant nursery that I have not been to yet. Uh, I need to go there because the, the local nursery to me, that's just like basically around the corner. They didn't have a ton of native plants that weren't big trees. Um, they may have more, but it's giant and so many choices and so many things. And, um, yeah, so I will be looking for that. Um, and then our front garden is a very big space. I need to do the edging around that because my grass is trying to take it back and the weeds are trying to take it back. And we also have, before I realized that I wanted native plants, I bought some what is it? They're like, they're not succulents, they're sedum. I bought a sedum that, I mean, it could, it looks similar to some of our native sedums, but I don't think it is. And man, that stuff is everywhere. I need to pull it all out. And even after I pull it all out, I will probably have tons because everywhere you drop one of those little leaves, a new plant grows which is great if you wanted to just cover everything, but it's taking out my hostas and it's almost like completely surrounded a rose bush and um, my poor tulip bulbs, like my tulips came up in it and it's just like completely surrounding them. They look so sad and yeah. So I'm in the process of pulling that up, but I pulled up so many weeds and pulled up, I did the edging around our front yard yesterday that are compost bins. We have two of those giant compost bins and they're completely full. So those are picked up tomorrow and then I can do more gardening. <sighs> yeah, so that's basically it. We started our vegetable garden, um, which I had to fence in because our dog is a digger and he had dug a good two foot hole into my raised bed. <laughs> he had gotten down below the level of the raised bed um, and just wanted to keep digging. So he also dug a hole and got down to where our septic drain field pipes were. Um, <laughs> thankfully it like, it was an enclosed part. You couldn't like, there's no damage to it. So I just filled it back in, but I need to be careful of that. Um, and watch where he's digging. We have a spot in the garden that he's, or in the yard that he's allowed to dig. It's just dirt. Um, and we encourage him to dig there, but sometimes he just, if, there's a little bear spot in the yard or I have pulled a weed and there's a bear spot and he smells that fresh earth. He's just like, I have to dig. So yeah. So I fenced in my garden. My mom actually came and visited and helped. We just did, um, tea posts and chicken wire and it seems to work. I just need to work on the gate part because right now it's just the chicken wire hooked on to the other thing and it's hard to open and close. And I definitely can't do it one handed. So yes. Okay, I'm gonna be done. This is 45 minutes and I still have that video to insert. So this is definitely one of my longer podcasts. Um, yes, I hope you all have a wonderful May and I hope you all had a wonderful early spring, end of the winter. I don't even remember when the last podcast was, but I hope you find joy in your crafting and you don't get too annoyed with it like I've been doing with mine. Um, and even when you're annoyed, just keep doing it. You can always rip it out and start over. Uh, so have a wonderful day. Bye.